With us now is Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, the author of the great book, The Endless War. Colonel Peters, before we get into that uh, flip flop rooney maybe, what do you think of this uh, calm smackdown we just had? Okay, I mean, look. My old friend, Alan Combs. Yeah, Alan Combs needs to leave the humor to Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart is funny on purpose and he's good at it. Alan Combs is funny by accident and he's not good at it. And uh, you notice that Alan didn't answer your question, which was, do you, he didn't really answer it. Do you believe that America's guilty, more, has more blood on its hands than Al Qaeda, as Imam Rauf said publicly? Well, we all know that's not true. We all know the crazy claim that Imam Rauf made about 500,000 Iraqi babies starved to death because of America. It's not true. If, if, if in a, na a nation of 26 million, like Iraq, 500,000 infants had starved to death, there'd be a missing generation. Well, and, you know, and, and the idea that, that once we learn more about what Ms. Khan and her husband obviously think about America, regardless of what, what you think about an Islamic center anywhere, their views about America, how are they bridge builders? How is that going to help bridge a divide between Muslims who still distrust the American way of life or Americans' intentions and, and, and the rest of the world or us? I mean, it doesn't foster anything except more stereotypes. That's yeah. my whole point. And I learned a lot since December when I talked to Daisy Khan. I liked her original idea about assimilation, yeah, but well, now we're learning more. Well, of course you liked her because these people are really good cons. I mean, that's what Are cons you doing do. A, doing a, a play on words, that's unfortunate. No, wait, I, we can. Okay, but hey, I, you, you should do the John Stewart thing. Okay, fine. Minute. Okay, but seriously, uh, these people are playing the American this liberal establishment elite for all it's worth. And if Imam Rauf got on TV tomorrow and said, I think America is evil and hateful and I hope it is destroyed, the New York Times would explain that. Well, really, he didn't mean it that way. You have to take it in context. Well, the elites really are more afraid of, of conservative Christians, are they not, oftentimes, than they are afraid of anything al-Qaeda or jihadists are ever going to do to the country. I mean, we're really the bigger threat. Than, and, well, I, and so I think they don't really have problems when they hear stuff like that, because they, a lot of them believe that America is just pr pretty much a negative force in the world. Look, I think, I think two things are happening right now with the Moss thing. First of all, you're seeing common sense average Americans two-thirds of Americans saying we've had enough. Okay, we're tolerant of Islam. As Liz Cheney pointed out earlier, there's no country except Canada on earth that does more, more tolerant of Muslims. Le Muslims have more legal protections here, uh, more rights than anywhere else on earth. But, you know, it's not just us being tolerant of Islam. Islam should show a little bit of tolerance, assimilation. too. Assimilation. Assimilation yeah. isn't just bending to the other people. It's assimilation is actually saying, well, there is yeah. an American and, culture, and, and we're going to respect it and, and try to be part of it. And how about the piece in the Sunday New York Times saying that stoning is women to death? Well, it's bad, but it really doesn't happen that often. And you got to understand oh, no, the cultural context. Where is the worst Hollywood on the stoning? I mean, uh, other than yeah. uh, you know the well, stoning of if, Soraya M. If, that if, Steve McAvity did. If, I mean, if, there hasn't if, been anything done if, on that. If they were stoning graduates of Barnard, Columbia, well, they, UC they would Berkeley. If they could, but yeah. that's what they don't understand. Now, before we uh, let you go, this uh, this speech on Tuesday about Iraq. Uh, we only have about a minute left. The president now wants to take credit for accomplishments in Iraq. Is is that fair? I mean, to be fair and balanced here, should he be able to take credit? Maybe he's had his own evolution. Sure, I'm waiting for him to put on a uniform and tell us he led the troops in in 2003. Look, uh, Obama and Biden are taking credit now for all the things they tried to prevent from happening no. in Iraq. But we wait. If things go south in Iraq, and they may because Obama's hands off, he's neglecting the political and diplomatic side. If they go south, it'll be George Bush's war again. Oh, so then the Bush card comes out. One, well, things are going good. Yeah. It's Laura, his own Laura. mission accomplished. In seventh grade, seventh grade, Barack Obama, Barry Obama, Little Barry got a bad grade. In seventh grade, he blamed George W. Bush. Oh. <laughs> John Stewart. Colonel Peters, thanks. Great to see you.